Warning, you may never eat bread again after watching this video. Now, I do know that even at hinting at this idea of taking away someone's bread can stir up a lot of upset, emotion, resistance, etc. But I just want to challenge you to watch this video because the question is, why do people love bread so much? I mean, what is it about the bread? that is so special that people like so much well you're about to find out that there is a huge push to get everyone on this planet to eat more grains the problem is we're already eating too many grains there's a new term i want to introduce to you called health washing health washing is a term to describe um, giving certain claims to foods that are not necessarily true i mean everywhere you look the grains are natural they're wholesome Whole grains are a part of a healthy diet. I mean, they're high in fiber, which they actually are not as high in fiber as other foods. They're loaded in vitamins and minerals, and we won't talk about the anti-nutrient called phytase that blocks those minerals. And grains are heart healthy, and they can even help you lower your, your belly fat. But the problem is that most of these studies are surveys, they're questionnaires, they're not peer-reviewed placebo-controlled clinical trials. And if they are, they're industry-sponsored studies. The point is that when we're continually told to consume six to 11 servings of grains as our foundation for our diet, one half of them being whole grains, the other can be refined grains, that's a tremendous amount of carbohydrates that are introduced to our diet. But today I'm gonna to talk about just one little tiny aspect of bread. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about how it turns into sugar and it can cause weight gain, I want to focus just on this one little thing called gluten, okay? Now, what is gluten? Gluten is the protein in a lot of grains, okay, especially wheat. And gluten is a term to describe um, various proteins within this category. And one of the proteins is called gliadin-derived opioid peptide, okay? Now, what the heck is that? That is a protein that can create an opioid effect. So in other words, it can mimic morphine to a certain degree. Now, what are the effects of opioids? Well, right now we have a major problem around the world with opioid addiction, the synthetic opioids, where it literally like fentanyl destroys people's lives. It's highly addictive. So just one thing an opioid will do is it'll increase endorphins, okay? Endorphins are internal body chemicals that make us feel good, that can help decrease pain, okay? And our bodies make endorphins. There's another term I wanna to introduce to you called exorphins, okay? An exorphin is an endorphin that can be triggered by food, okay? You consume certain things and it creates an endorphin effect. Now, this is very important to know because this is why you like bread so much. Bread stimulates endorphins. It gives you this euphoric feeling. It can stimulate appetite. That's why they serve you the bread before your meal. So you'll be hungrier and want to order more food. And so the reason why people love this bread is because it's altering our chemistry. It's increasing our endorphins, okay? Now, the problem is that it comes with a little bit of a package. You may have heard the celiac disease, which a person has a severe reaction to gluten, Okay, in the GI tract, they're going to get the classic symptoms, diarrhea, bloating, and abdominal pain, Okay, and a lot of other conditions too, like inflammation in the gut, eventual atrophy of the little villi or the little um, internal roots on your, in your small intestine that are supposed to help you absorb food. Those become smaller and smaller to the point where they're just no longer there. So you have a major digestive problem. And the problem with celiac is it's very hard to diagnose unless you do a biopsy. And so you might say, well, I'm, I don't have celiac. Um, I don't get diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain when I consume bread. So what's the big deal? Well, <laughs> there's something called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And this is basically asymptomatic celiac. In other words, a person will have celiac without the symptoms of the digestive tract, at least without classical symptoms, diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain. But they have other issues, okay? Because 
The problem is still occurring at your gut level. The damage is still being done uh, on these villi. You're getting inflammation, you're getting atrophy that will eventually show up in other problems down the road. But you may not experience really any symptoms when you have bread. But what I want to do is I want to expand your awareness on some other symptoms that you may be experiencing that are connected that you might not think are connected. Let's first talk about the mental connection, how it can affect uh, your mental state. Well, first of all, it can create symptoms like ADD, depression, anxiety, and even autism. And I will put that research down below. It can even lead to things like schizophrenia, which I will put that study down below as well. The other problem is a permeability issue in your gut. So you've heard of leaky gut, right? Well, that is a condition where you have holes in your gut that's created by the inflammation because there's so much omega-6 fatty acids in bread and grains. Like if we were going to compare omega-3 to omega-6, it's like 1 to 22. So in other words, there's 22 times more omega-6 fatty acids than there is omega-3. So there's a lot of inflammation going on, which is going to create holes or permeability issues in your lower gut. And when you have holes, you allow proteins to go through and you create all sorts of immune reactions. And then you create allergies and eventually autoimmune problems, especially of the thyroid, like in Hashimoto's. And then another one is psoriasis, okay, which is an autoimmune condition. So we get damage to our intestine and then we start getting malabsorption. We no longer absorb certain things. And that leads to vitamin and mineral deficiencies and a whole cascade of additional problems, which I'm not going to get into. Another common symptom is insomnia, which leads to fatigue. You may have brain fog. You may also become anemic because you can't absorb iron. And it can lead to digestive problems like GERD, which is a severe acid reflux and headaches and migraines and the list goes on and on and on. Now, sometimes uh, when people live in America, they consume like a pizza, for example, and they feel very bloated, but then that bloating goes away. And maybe they go on a trip uh, overseas. Uh, maybe they go to Italy and they eat a pizza, but they don't react. And they're wondering, why can I eat grains in certain countries, but I cannot consume them in other countries like America? Well, one of the reasons is that when you ferment grains into bread or pizza dough or whatever, the fermentation, the microbes actually eat the protein. They start reducing the gluten considerably. So for example, sourdough bread has a lot less gluten as other breads. And this is why they might not experience the bloating. And so in America, the way they make bread is they don't ferment it for two or three days. They, they maybe ferment it for like an hour or so. And so we retain the gluten. So the more gluten that a grain product has, the more you're going to have a problem with this. Now, the other point I want to bring up is that over the years, we've hybrid different grains uh, like wheat to have more gluten, okay? And this is one additional problem. And then there's also additional problems too. When you enrich um, or fortify these flour products, especially bread, with um, synthetic vitamins and iron, uh, a lot of people react to that as well. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that I'm just taking one aspect of grains, and that's gluten. But there's a lot of other additional problems as well. But I think even when people go off grains and they start the ketogenic plan, one huge reason why they might even feel so much better is not even necessarily the lowering of the carbohydrates. It is the abstinence of eating these grains that eliminate a lot of the inflammation that is going on in the gut and then all the associated symptoms. So I want to challenge you just to avoid eating bread, okay, for one week, okay? In fact, avoid all grains for one week and just see how you feel. And then the next week, go back to eating bread and grains and then see how you feel and then compare these two and then decide whether it's worth it or not. Now, if you have not seen my video on sugar and how that affects the red blood cell, that's a real interesting video. I'm going to put that one up right here. Check it out.